Hello folks. Today I'm going to be taking a look at a wireless microphone system. The Rode Wireless Go has become very popular and has been talked about and hyped up quite a bit since it came out. So it was no big surprise when I found that Chinese branded wireless systems started to show up that bore a striking resemblance to the Rode Wireless Go. I was a bit surprised when I found reviews claiming that not only was it excellent, but it was the new system to beat for 2020. So I decided to pick one up, give it a look and a listen, and see how it works. The price is currently around $100, but it seems that they used to be $150, so the price you know, may fluctuate quite a bit. The system I have here is the PhotoWelt Air, but it seems to be identical to the Sokani Tiny. As you can see, it's very similar in overall design to the Rode Wireless Go. There are some differences though, and the first big one is that rather than 2.4 GHz, it operates at UHF frequencies between 575 and 605 megahertz. That actually made me immediately skeptical as to how strong the signal and range will be. And that's simply because the length of an efficient antenna for a given radio system is strongly related to the wavelength of the frequency. The lower the frequency, the longer the wavelength. That's why you typically see, you know, four to five inch external antennas on other systems that operate in this frequency range. A 2.4 gigahertz system has a far shorter wavelength, so it makes much more sense to have, you know, a one inch antenna inside a tiny case like this, but a tiny antenna in a UHF system like this could be a limitation. The system is a bit larger than the Rode Wireless Go, uh, but it's still fairly small. There is a display screen on both the transmitter and the receiver. There are power buttons on the side, control buttons on the bottom edge, charging ports uh, opposite the power button, and the top has the uh, built-in microphone and 3.5 millimeter mic jack on the transmitter and the two 3.5 millimeter output jacks on the receiver. Underneath are the little clips that uh, do fit into a camera shoe mount uh, just like on the uh, wireless go system. The system comes with a single uh, USB-C to USB-A uh, for charging. It comes with both a TRS and a TRRS cable for connecting to a camera, recorder, or mobile device. And it comes with a lavalier microphone. One thing I noticed about charging them is that when they are turned off and you plug them in to charge, the battery icon shows full right away. Uh, they do charge over time, but the icon doesn't tell you anything. Once they are turned on, you do get a battery level meter some type of audio meter that is all but completely useless. You get an indication on the receiver of the signal strength. You get a display of the currently selected channel and frequency, and a level indicating the mic gain on the transmitter and the output volume on the receiver, both of which are adjustable from zero to 15 using the plus and minus buttons on the bottom. On the receiver, you have two outputs. One is the output for the camera recording device, though it seems to be incorrectly labeled as an input with the arrow. Uh, the other is the headphone jack. Unfortunately, the outputs are tied together and the volume adjusts both simultaneously. So you can't adjust your headphone volume without also adjusting your recording output level at the same time. And I found that even with the mic gain maxed, uh, the volume maxed, and my lowest impedance, highest sensitivity headphones plugged in, the volume is so low that it's nearly useless for monitoring. If I hold the mic right up to my mouth, I can get okay volume out of the headphones. So you can at least check to see that the system is working. But once the mic is in a typical location on a shirt, the headphone output is so quiet that I can barely hear anything. And it gets totally silent if you turn the gain or volume down at all, or if I plug in less sensitive headphones. All in all, I don't think the headphone jack adds all that much value or usefulness. Pressing the little setting gear button on the bottom, allows you to set the channel with the plus and minus buttons on both the receiver and the transmitter. A short press of the power button will mute or unmute either one. Build quality is okay, but not great. Uh, the little clips have a rubber pad under them, but uh, one already fell out and I had to stick it back in place. Those rubber pads are also so narrow uh, that they just barely hit when clipped into a shoe mount. Uh, so they're very loose fitting and they fall out kind of easy. Also, the glossy plastic front cover is kind of popping up in one corner on the uh, transmitter. There's also some small scratches inside the plastic uh, on one display and a fingerprint inside the other one. On the included lav mic, 
Uh, the wire is loose and can spin freely in the bottom of the capsule housing. Uh, this could lead to problems with the wires, so you know the mic might not be very robust long term. Mostly small things, but altogether it just leads to uh, a fairly low impression of quality overall. But now let's see how it sounds. Uh, for starters, I'll be recording into my portable recorder rather than into my camera. That way you can see the receiver and the audio levels on the recorder. And I'll be recording in my treated sound booth so you can get the best idea possible of the sound quality. Okay, so now I'm recording into my MixPre 3 second gen. And I'm using the, the PhotoWelt Air wireless system. And I'm using the just the built-in microphone on the transmitter. The transmitter is clipped to the front of my shirt. And I would say that the microphone is about mm, six inches or so away from my mouth. Now as for the little meter on the front of the, uh, the receiver here, you can see that it seems to fidget around a little bit more when I'm talking, but even when I'm not talking, it's still fluttering around enough that, um, you know, it, it's not very useful. And it certainly isn't giving a good indication of the level or how close you are to clipping or anything like that. Now I have the gain on the microphone on the transmitter set to 12, and I also have the volume on the receiver set to 12. Uh, like I said, they max out at 15, I have them set at 12, and I find if you go very much higher than that, you get just a really terrible noise in the recording, and it seems to boost the high frequencies a lot more than it does the low frequencies. So it, it's, it seems to get, um, you know, just a really off-balanced EQ uh, response curve as you turn the gain up. So I really don't recommend turning the gain up any higher than 12 or 13 unless you absolutely have to. But this is what it sounds like with the internal microphone and with uh, both set to 12 on the, uh, you know, the respective gain and volume. So just for comparison so that you can get an idea of that sound that I'm talking about, I'm going to go ahead and max the gain on both, uh, then readjust the gain on my recorder so that we can get similar levels, and uh, we'll see how that sounds. Okay, so I think I'm getting pretty similar levels now. Um, I might be getting levels just a little bit higher than I was before. And uh, you can probably hear that underlying flutter. Um, it's a really odd noise. In fact, even when I'm not talking, you can see the level meters on my recorder fluttering because of that, that underlying flutter from the uh, wireless system. And uh, maybe you can tell also that there's a little bit more of like a kind of a, a rough, like, scratchy noise to my voice, um, almost like an underlying hiss that is being canceled out when I'm not talking. And um, I think that the, the highs just sound it's accentuated now. Uh, there's just a lot more sibilance. It's just a, it's just a lot harsher sound when you have the, the gain maxed out like that. Okay, so now I have the included lavalier plugged into the transmitter, and I have the gain and the volume turned back down uh, to 12 on each. And I did notice that even with the two maxed out, uh, that fluttering that I was hearing what just decreased significantly as soon as I plugged the lavalier system microphone in. That tends to make me suspect that uh, whatever the power supply is that's feeding uh, the plug-in power to the microphone, when there's no load on it, it's, it's giving that flutter, and that's kind of feeding back into the system somehow. And once you put a load on that with the microphone, uh, that flutter mostly goes away. But this is the sound that I'm getting with, like I said, the included lavalier microphone. Uh, plugged into the PhotoWelt Air system. And just for comparison, I went ahead and maxed out the gain and the volume on the receiver and transmitter once again. And so this is what it sounds like now um, with the lavalier microphone plugged in. That, that fluttering noise is still there, but it's definitely reduced quite a bit. Okay, and now just for comparison, I have a Deity WLAV plugged into the PhotoWelt Air wireless system. So instead of using the included microphone, I'm using one that costs um, about as much as the whole wireless system does. So this is what that sounds like, just so you have a point of comparison with a more expensive microphone running through this system. And just for the heck of it, one final comparison. I still have the Deity WLAV uh, clipped to the same spot on my shirt, but now I have it plugged directly into my audio recorder instead of going through the wireless system. So this is what that lavalier microphone sounds like, just recording directly into my recorder, just so you can get a kind of a point of comparison of how this microphone sounds uh, without this uh, in the chain. All right, so now I'm out in my garage for a little bit more of a real-world test, um, you know, rather than being <laughs> in a sound booth with the receiver and the transmitter sitting right next to each other. Also, the garage, you know, has a lot more echo, um, you know, a lot more kind of reverberations and all that, so we'll see how it does uh, as far as, you know, in that kind of a situation. 
I have the uh, gain and the output volume on the photo weld air system both maxed out and I'm using the included lavalier microphone. Now, it's just a small two-car garage. Um, you know, it, it just fits two small cars. So, you know, I can't really get all that far away from the receiver, but I'm still going to walk around a little bit. Um, we'll see if we get any kind of dropouts or any kind of an increase in uh, background noise or anything like that, you know, interference and stuff. So I'm just going to walk around a little bit like I would, um, you know, if I was actually you know, trying to do something out here and be able to record at the same time. So, you know, if I turn around and walk to their side of the garage, the other corner, maybe walk over behind the car and, uh, you know, kind of turn around again so that maybe the car and my body is between uh, the receiver and the transmitter and back a little bit. And we'll just see if we get any kind of random dropouts. Now, if we do, you know, that's a pretty sad state because I'm not getting any more than probably about 20 feet away from the receiver. But that'll tell us that, at least in a small situation like this, in, in a building, um, you know, what is the signal strength like? And is it reliable? So now I'm back standing right behind the camera. Hello. <laughs> so <clears throat> uh, how does that sound? How does it work? Did we get any dropouts? I'm now recording with the, uh, this wireless system directly into my camera. I still have the output of the receiver and the gain on the transmitter both maxed out. And I have the le audio recording level on my camera set pretty darn low. But I still find that the audio output levels of this PhotoWelt system are definitely lower than like any of my other uh, wireless systems. So if you have a camera with um, you know, really weak preamps or fuzzy preamps or something like that uh, to where you really want to be able to just turn those all the way down, uh, you might not be able to do that with this wireless system. Anyway, just a quick test to see how it sounds recording directly into my Sony camera. Alright, so I listened back to the previous audio that was recorded directly into the camera uh, with both the uh, input and output gains maxed on the photo welt system and I could definitely hear that fluttering noise uh, pretty, pretty clearly in the recording. So now I've turned the gain back just down just a little bit. It's now set at 12 on both the devices and I had to turn the gain up in my camera quite a lot. So let's see if that helps, see if that cleaned up the audio at all, and uh, see if this is any better. Once again, still recording with the included lavalier mic plugged into the PhotoWelt system. Okay, now I'm recording with still the same settings. I'm still recording with the uh, gain on the transmitter set at 12, and the output volume on the receiver set at 12, and the record levels on my camera set at 15, but now I have the uh, external mic detached and I'm just recording with the microphone that is built into the transmitter. And uh, so this is how it sounds with the built-in microphone on the transmitter. Okay, so now I've got the output volume on the receiver maxed out, but I still have the gain on the transmitter set at 12. So we'll see how that balance sounds, if that makes it any better or worse. Uh, because I did turn on the output volume on the receiver, I turned the uh, record level on my camera down just a little bit to compensate. So once again, built-in microphone on the transmitter and this is how it sounds with that balance of settings. Okay, so take, I don't know, a thousand. <laughs> um, I'm back in my sound booth and um, I've just been trying so hard to get decent results out of this. Uh, I've just been testing tons of different combinations of settings, different situations. Um, and I found what I thought kind of worked the best. I was back here in the uh, sound booth just to give it another go to get, uh, you know, just to give it the best chance possible. Um, now you might have heard when I first started the recording, it kind of is coming and going, but now there's like this popping noise. Um, I don't know if it's a, a signal interference or some kind of other electrical problem, but um, I've changed cables, I've moved stuff around, and it, it doesn't seem to be uh, related to that at all. And uh, I'm currently recording with the built-in microphone uh, It's built into the transmitter, so you know, it's not a connection at the microphone in terms of, you know, whether the microphone is plugged into the system or anything, so I don't know what the heck is going on with that. But I currently have the settings set uh, about as good as I can get them to get the best results possible, and that is with the output of the receivers maxed out at 15, and with the, uh, the gain on the transmitter set at about 11 or 12. If you max the gain on the transmitter, you just get that really loud thrumming noise. Um, I've determined that it goes away 
uh, significantly if you turn down the gain on the transmitter uh, and then you can then max out the uh, the volume on the receiver and it doesn't come back so it's it's definitely coming just solely from the transmitter and turning the gain on that down a little bit does significantly reduce it even when using the uh, built-in microphone on the transmitter but uh, just so you know these are the the absolute best results I can get out of the built-in microphone on the transmitter uh, here in a sound booth you know you're not going to get any better uh, situation than this and you know I've tried different frequencies I've tried different balance of settings and everything this is about the best I can get it and you know it's going into a quality recorder so um, you know it's pretty doubtful that any camera is going to have you know better preamps than this recorder so this is pretty much about the best results you can expect to get out of this system with the built-in microphone and here we have those same settings uh, but now using the included lavalier microphone so again uh, you can see I have the, uh, the the gain on the transmitter set at 12 and I have the output of the receiver set at 15. And that seems to be the best balance to give you the best possible sound um, with either the included uh, microphone, the built-in microphone, or even other microphones. If you turn the, uh, the, the gain down any more on the transmitter, I find that the output level just gets so low um, that you just, it, it, the, the steps are huge. I mean, it's, it's really not one dB at a time. If I go down even just to like 10, It'll, it'll barely even register at all on my recorder. So, I mean, it's just, the output just goes so far down that it's, it's almost unusable at that point. And any louder, as I'll demonstrate here, and even with a microphone plugged in, you can just barely, if I be quiet, you can start to hear that thrumming noise coming back in. And if I unplug the included lavalier, now you can hear that thrumming noise really coming back with the gain uh, turned up on the transmitter. So that's where I find the, you know, the best balance of settings to be. Uh, 12 dB gain on the transmitter, 15 uh, on the volume output of the uh, receiver. So now you're hearing almost the same settings, but this time with the DADW lav plugged into the transmitter. And I say almost the same settings because I actually did turn the, uh, the gain on the transmitter down 1 to 11 because, and even still I'm getting higher levels than I was before. The included lavalier just has so much lower of an output than this microphone and, you know, combined with the, the poor signal to noise ratio of this setup, um, you know, it just means that you have to have everything turned up so high to get good levels out of it. So uh, the WLAV definitely helps. So I just wanted to be thorough and show you what it sounds like um, after a whole bunch of testing and with the best settings that I found dialed in. Okay, I'm going to wrap this video up and give some final thoughts. I know I didn't do any outdoor or long-range testing. Uh, it dropped out on me a couple of times in my garage, so I am curious to do more range testing. I'm actually going to do a comparison with a bunch of different wireless systems, including this one, and I'll be testing out audio quality and range. I'm also going to try out the Sakani branded version of this system. I'm curious if that version is somehow better or... Uh, if there's some sample variation that accounts for the good experiences that some reviewers seem to have. And that's why this video got a bit derailed for me and ran so long. I recorded the first part of this video days ago, and I didn't want to misrepresent the results, so I just kept trying things whenever I got time. I wanted to find the combination that gives the best possible results. So you've heard the best that I could get out of the system and everything in between. And in case you were wondering if my recorder was part of the problem, I'm actually using my recorder for this final part of the video rather than my usual audio interface. I have a Shure SM7B connected to it, which is a notoriously low output mic. In fact, the gain on my recorder is set higher now than it was for any of the testing with the wireless system. So clearly the hiss and noise were not coming from my recorder. Overall, this wireless system doesn't have very good sound quality. Granted, it's cheaper than most of my other wireless systems and it is totally fair for the sound quality to be a step down. But it's just such a big step down. The built-in mic has a better tone and hotter levels than the included lavalier, but that rhythmic thrumming sound is pretty bad if you turn the levels up very high at all on the transmitter when using the built-in mic. And the highs are still a bit sharp and harsh. The included lav mic has a really thin, harsh sound, and the output is super low. 
my Deity Lav mic did provide better results, and if that's how the system sounded out of the box, I'd say that it was okay for the price. But I certainly wouldn't recommend buying this system and adding a $100 mic to it. The Deity Lav still sounded muffled on this system. Uh, there were still compression and processing artifacts, and it has an artificial sound to it that uh, almost reminds me of low sample rate MP3 files from, you know, like 20 years ago. To me, it would make more sense to put that money towards a better wireless system in the first place. On the plus side, latency is super low, so there is that. Another thing to keep in mind is that uh, there probably won't be any warranty support with this system. Nothing on the ad page lists any warranty, and the only thing the manual says is that disassembly voids all warranties, and that the warranty doesn't apply to repairs due to malfunction. <laughs> I'm guessing that's a bad translation, but who knows. Either way, it doesn't actually say what the warranty is, and it doesn't list a company name, an address, website, phone number, or email address. So other than contacting the seller on whatever site you order from, I don't know how you'd even request support. So you'll probably just be out if it fails. Ultimately, I don't recommend this system as it is. I, I think you would be far better off saving up and spending a little more for a much more capable system. Even the Ceremonic Blink 500 system trounces this thing in every way except latency. I'll see how the Sakani Tiny system does, and if it happens to be way better, I'll make an update video. But in the meantime, if you have any questions or if there's anything else you want me to test out with this system, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching. Take care.